mousetrap card. Nope. God. The mousetrap car is a staple competition amongst high school physics classes. In this video, I'm attempting to absolutely dominate in building the best distance mousetrap car. The goal? To build a car from scratch only powered off a single mousetrap that can travel as far as possible. Being an assignment for this physics class, the distance traveled makes up a part of the grade. And other stuff too, I guess. But before we start building, I want to explain the keys to a successful distance car as simply as possible. If I do get anything wrong, I apologize in advance. Please don't bash me, I'm a funny YouTuber, not a scientist. NUMBER ONE! Imagine this random situation. This cool guy wants to give his friend some candy. So he goes on his way to give it, but he gets absolutely robbed of some of the candy. The guy manages to get most of the candy back, makes it to his friend, and gets what's left. This dumb analogy is supposed to show the transfer of energy that is happening in our car. In our mousetrap car, the spring in our mousetrap is what stores energy until it's used, just like the cool guy in our skid who kept candy for his friend. This represents potential energy. When the mousetrap is released, the energy is now used to move the car, just like how the guy's friend is given the candy to eat. This represents kinetic energy. Unfortunately, we can't use all the energy to move the car since some of it goes to unwanted things like heat. In our skit, it would be represented by the robber stealing the precious candy. In our car, we want more energy used on moving and less energy wasted. We can do this by reducing the force applied on the axle. The energy will be used over a longer period of time, which reduces the amount of energy that is wasted. In our analogy, it would look something like this. Thing is, we can't decrease the pulling force too much, otherwise the car won't move. And spoiler alert, I do run into this problem later in this video. NUMBER TWO! The car will have a harder time moving if everything is rubbing against each other, so reducing friction in our car is very important. AND NUMBER THREE! The heavier an object, the more force and energy that you need to move it. That's Newton's second law. To maximize on the use of energy in our car, it should be as light as possible. But it can't be too light, otherwise the world will end. If you want a more detailed explanation, I'll link Mark Grober's video about this in the description. But with that said, let's get the materials to build this thing. Some skater berries reduce friction. Hey guys, look, the CD is still sealed. Oh, that's not how you open it? Wow, fresh CD. All right, here's the wood that we're gonna be using. First, these long, slightly thin wooden dowels. And we also got these wooden picture frames that I got from my physics teacher. I got them for free. Now we got the uh, wood and we got a saw. And that can only mean one thing. So we got the pieces for the frame of our car, but the ends are a bit rough. So... so as I was building, I ran into a slight problem. The wood is a little bit too narrow for us to be able to drill a hole in. So I had to make another trip to the Home Depot just to get a sufficiently sized piece of wood for this car. Probably worth mentioning that you could also use styrofoam or cardboard in place of wood. Just be careful not to make your car too light. This is totally not painful at all. So after some struggles with stubborn adhesive and more wood cutting, we're now ready to drill holes for the ball bearings. Also, shout out to my dad for helping me out throughout this video. The first time, it didn't really go so well, but we eventually got it done. With that done, the next thing is to glue the parts of the frame together. We got our frame, 
The next thing is we need to set up our bearings. We're gonna grab our bearings, throw it into the mm -hmm. shade. We gotta coat them in some WD-40. Oh my gosh. It's a good thing I'm doing this in ventilated area. If you're wondering why we're doing this, it's because WD-40 is better suited for lighter loads compared to stock lubrication. With the WD-40, there's less friction and there's more free spin. Alright guys, back to the cutting board or cutting block or cutting something. Oh sh**, my brother took my stool. Now we have to get all of the CDs and add some traction to them. We're gonna be using some blue. I don't have scissors. My gosh. Ah, yes. The magical lands of. If there's a will, there's a way. Every Brampton driver in existence. But at least we got the uh, CDs down. This is gonna be. Oh, sh Okay. There you go. Finally. Now I'm gonna attach the bearings and the CDs to the axle. That hole is way too big. So we get some bottle caps from plastic water bottles, glue them to the CD, then get sidetracked and make cardboard cutouts for the pulley, then realize I forgot to make holes for the pulley's bearings, then make a hole just for the axle, then attach the wheels. Yes! Yup, definitely not surprising at all. Do you get marks off if you use your mousetrap car as a YouTube billboard? <laughs> Time to glue the pieces of the pulley together with a smaller diameter in the middle to keep the string within the pulley. And now it's a matter of setting up the string in the mousetrap. A pulley system will help decrease the pulling force on the axle, helping in increasing travel distance. But the setup is a bit more complicated. First, we need a lever arm coming from the mousetrap then fishing line from the lever arm to the pulley, and dental floss from the pulley to the axle. That setup took so long that I didn't bother recording most of it, so here's what I ended up with. Mm -mm. Oh, why did it stop? <laughs> That's very much a problem. There's not enough pulling force being applied to the axle for it to be able to move on the ground. At that point, I didn't know how to deal with it, so I just decided to try a long lever arm instead of a pulley. It's a solid option. Almost 18 minutes. Wow. And it was totally worth testing outside while wildfires were affecting the weather. I really wanted to use the pulley system though. And I ended up finding out how to solve the problem I was having earlier. By wrapping the axle with enough tape, I was able to increase the pulling force enough for the car to function. And with that came a working pulley mousetrap car. Uh, 20 meters. 20 meters. All right, guys, we did um, a bit of optimization here. I replaced those like little frame things with more wooden skewers. Number two, I replaced the mousetrap, more fresher springs. Number three, I moved this more back. That work here's done. And with that, we have our final product. There's still one problem though. It's drifting! No! And it has to do with the alignment of the wheels. If you do end up building one of these, you have to be 1000% sure that the axles are perfectly aligned or you'll get a dumb result like this. You can counter this by starting on the side of the drift and aiming at an angle away from the direction of the drift. This keeps the car from hitting the wall sooner. This is why you should test your car early and often. It gives you enough time to find and fix problems you might find with your car. With that said though, trial day dawns upon us. We're allowed up to two tries in an attempt to get a good distance, with your final result being based on your best distance. Even with previous testing, the nerves run high. Well. Here goes nothing. Round one. I don't know how far this is gonna go. I think it's gonna drift. I knew it. Oh no. I know we're good. We know we're good. 
and it decided to not again oh i see why remember that stupid problem with the pulling force yep looks like we've run into that problem yet again though it was my fault this time because part of the string went off of the taped part and the car struggled to pull the axle because of that the stakes are even higher now because a poor performance would mean i did all of this for no reason but here goes round two round two it's drifting that way and it went that way okay go this time i took my time to wind it so should work fine it stops in the middle i'm gonna cry so far so good Oh, it might, it might crash into the thing again. Oh boy. How long is this? Awesome! So, how did I do? From what I know, only like two or three people beat my distance, including this one girl in my class who went the full distance of the hallway. Unfortunately, she remains a mystery because she didn't want to be on YouTube. But she made a long styrofoam car with a long lever arm. I feel like I could have done better, mainly using lighter materials and pushing the limits of how low the pulling force could have went while having a functional car. But overall, I think I did very good. If there's a moral of this video, sometimes simple is better. But also, test to see what works. And test often. Anyhow, that's it from the mousetrap car. Also, I'm sorry for leaving you guys without an upload for like five f***ing months. But if you're a high school physics student and you found this helpful, or you're an average yantrical viewer and you found this fascinating, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, comment your thoughts down below and share this video with your friends and family. Well, yeah, that's all for me. See you all in the next video. I said, baby. <laughs> Make sure you put those on, Rob. Really? Yeah. Wait.